Yo, what is going on, everybody, and welcome back to Vanguard Le Nightly News Week Six or Seven. Seven? It's a day. It's a day. It's 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 one of the ones I forgot count already. Yeah, we'll have it marked properly on the video. Yeah, we'll have it marked properly on the video. I forgot the day. First thing I'd like to do is start off by saying uh, James Autumn couldn't make it today, but I would like to say welcome into Nemesis James. He just got accepted into Nemesis this week, so it's awesome to see him part of an awesome organization that along with me a bunch of other people are a part of so again welcome james to nemesis can't wait to do more things with you man and um as always guys i'm vg that's shark and panda and we're gonna get into some football to start this off so thursday night's game was the cardinals versus the seahawks uh final score was 28 21 seahawks uh i kind of expected a little bit more out of this game with both teams not really having a really good defense, but both of their offense has been really good this year. Uh, Seahawks has actually struggled the last few weeks, which we'll get into, but I kind of expected a little bit more out of this game. Uh, Kyler Murray had a decent game, 29 for 42, 269 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Fitzgerald of old, of late, really. Um, he's had a couple get good games this year uh, recently, but eight catches for 62 yards. Russell Wilson still looking a little bit off like the last week or two. Uh, 23 for 38, 197 yards and two touchdowns. Carlos Hyde did return in this game, which um, helps them out with their rushing, of course. So, But Carlos Hyde had 79 yards and a touchdown. And then Tyler Lockett, nine catches, 67 yards and a touchdown. And DK Metcalf, uh, quiet game, but still found the end zone for three catches for 46 yards. And this was really a I shootout got. between these two teams, so I mean... Yeah. Kyler Murray's been doing phenomenal in the past couple games, and I, I don't know, Wilson has just always been looking good besides these past couple games, but both of those quarterbacks are still very talented, and I feel like this game was really just a game of offense. Oh, yeah. They're, both defenses um, have been... Or lackluster. <laughs> yeah, so... I wasn't really. Ex I was kind of expecting a little bit more scoring, honestly. But mm -hmm. um, I mean, you get what you get, and you take it. So, oh, okay, can can I do this next one? Yeah, you can do the next one. All right, next up on the list, we got the Eagles versus the Browns. Seventeen to twenty-two, <laughs> Browns take it. Not surprised. Eagles turn over two interceptions and a fumble. It's Wentz time over. In my personal opinion, yes, get him the fuck out. Um. Wentz goes 235 for uh, two yard, uh, two touchdowns. Jesus Christ, I cannot talk. <laughs> uh, Sanders is still looking rough. Uh, we basically don't have an O-line. Our O-line's kind of all over the place. Goddard is looking good again. Coming back after being injured, right? Yep. Uh, he, went f he had five receptions for 77 yards and a touchdown, which it's good to get him back in rotation and stuff like that. And then Nick Chubb rushes for 114 yards. Browns just kind of shat on us. I mean, they they legit took the Browns to the Super Bowl in this situation. Uh, they are saying, like, the Browns are, like, low-key making a splash. Like, no one's really going on about them, but they are no, actually doing, doing really good. well. Like, their, their, defense, their defense is what's really carrying them lately. Um, they did have a pick six, I believe, in this game. They also had a fumble. Uh, recovery as well uh, yeah. from Miles Sanders, uh, but their offense really hasn't been doing a lot in these last few games. But I mean, they're still finding ways to win. And that's really all that matters at the end of the game. Well, Chubb uh, coming back, it's that was a big. That's help a for them. big yeah, plus for they, them. They're they're definitely a run first uh, team, yeah. and being Works able to that too, and being able to take a little bit of load off of Kareem Hunt, who kind of helps. He's more yeah. of a receiving back, scat back, mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. um, so that really helps. But Still a viable option for fantasy, by the way. <laughs> yes. The uh, Browns defense did good this game, um, mm -hmm. which I kind of thought they would struggle a little bit with Miles Garrett, Garrett being out because of COVID. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, honestly, it looked like he wasn't really missed that much. When it comes down to it, I saw this meme. Um, going back to the Wentz and if his time is actually over as starting QB or not. It was a SpongeBob meme. You remember that episode of SpongeBob when 
that eel or whatever took his ice cream. SpongeBob was like, hey, that's my ice cream. You can have it. That's Wentz with the fucking football. He's just giving uh, it away at this point. Yeah. And but, like, what the fuck did you expect? I, I know. I, I think that at this point, put Jalen Hurts in, see what he can no, do. Foles fit that scheme better than he did. Oh, I know he did. So, the fact when, like, at least that's when Foles was on the team. Mm-hmm. But, like, then they change stuff up. It's like, if you would have kept Foles, got rid of once, you probably could have got a first for once in that period of time. Mm-hmm. Like, still, even after even after he got hurt, you probably still could have got a first for him. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, like, if you get a first bad. for him, you keep the quarterback that actually won- ran you through the playoffs and won the Super Bowl. Like, that that's a fucking win-win. He, you pick up another quarterback in the draft. Wentz isn't bad. I just feel like Wentz, he just, he can't fit he's not, the scheme. He's not. Yes. He cannot fit the scheme that they want to run. And it's in the long run hurting the Eagles offense. But that that's enough on just basically beating a dead horse here. And I, I, I don't... Carson Wentz is having issues. But I think me and you have talked about it before. And we talked about it's it last the whole time. Team. Stream. The O-line has been playing really bad. And they're all hurt and everything. So, like... Half our own lines are around Saint, second Saint and third string. A hundred percent on Wentz. I can't say that now. I no, I can't say no, that can, either. Can I? Can I say Wentz is playing bad? Yes, but um, like I'd say at least sixty percent of it's Wentz. About twenty percent the wide receivers and twenty percent is the line. I, I I mean I would say that there there is definitely a percentage on the receivers because if you look back when they had fucking Jeffrey, he was dropping the ball a lot. Jeffrey he can would, barely stay healthy. He uh he he also had another Joel catches this game too, so this is his second third game back. Yeah, and still has zero catches. But yeah, like fucking when when he was like playing, I think it was last year. Chase and I were actually talking about the games the majority of the time when they were coming up, like before stream. Mm-hmm. And he was dropping so much. I mean, granted, all the receivers were, but I mean, that's not always their fault. Sometimes the ball's behind. Sometimes it may be a little bit forward. They just barely get it on the fingertips, something like that. But there's points where it just goes directly into the chest or it's hitting right on the fucking hand and they drop the ball. It's like, it's not all once, but there are positions where it's more once than receiver. Oh, I agree. agree. Next up, we got the uh, Falcons versus the Saints. 9 to 24, Saints take it. No breeze, no problem. Taysom Hill came out and really showed out. Honestly. I I fucking love that kid, dude. (laughs) For sure. 284 total yards and two rushing touchdowns. Didn't get a passing touchdown, but he got it done either way. Granted, that was against a terrible team. I mean... (laughs) 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 Um, Yeah, we say it pretty much every fucking week, a win's a win. Michael Thomas, uh, looking looking like his old self. Uh, Nine catches for 104 yards. I know he's been having a rough couple weeks since he's been back. So, mm-hmm. to see him get over 100 yards is very... It, it's good to see that, because you know he's a good receiver. And you just want to see him succeed. Falcons have a terrible game. Matty Ice with 19 for 37, 232 yards, and two interceptions. Wow, sounds like the uh, sounds like the Eagles game, but we don't talk about that. Um, After we just did. Exactly. <laughs> Gurley with eight rushes, 26 yards, and Julio with two catches for 39 yards. Going to Gurley on this Falcons offense, I just I don't think that he fits it. They brought him in because he was a, he's a uh, Atlanta native, and that's honestly the reason why they they brought him back. They brought him there. And really? So honestly, when Gurley went uh, went into free agency, I was like, Buffalo should pick him up. Buffalo, like he could run the ball hard. You figure snow games, stuff like that, you get Singletary and him, it yeah. would have been fucking solid. You got a nice little screen catch kind of guy and fucking shifty ass running back in Singletary, and then you got Gurley who can power the ball. So I was like, Buffalo should go for him, but then it was pretty much like immediately when the uh, Falcons signed him, and I was like, well, it could work, but after seeing what he's done so far, it's kind of just <coughs> been a bad situation. Hey. I've never was really a big fan of him, especially after the injury he had. 
Mm-hmm. Um, two years ago, I think it was a knee injury. Two years ago, and ever since that time, like he's not looked the same at all, for sure. He's had he's had spurts. That's about yeah. it. He gets his games in, his good games in, but I don't know. Uh, spurts. Shark, you can go ahead and take the next one. <laughs> next game was uh, Bengals versus the Washington football team. What uh, the fuck? Washington <laughs> football team <laughs> won 20 to 9. The main thing about this was uh, Joe Burrow getting injured. Uh, Rip McCauley Gulkin. Going to be out the rest of the year and some of next year. Most I honestly likely. think they should keep him out next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Give him more time to recover. So, so the injury he um, received was the ACL being torn, MCL being completely torn as well, and some other structural damage to the knee. <laughs> yeah. um, normally when people do this, uh, they say that it takes about nine months to a year. Mm-hmm. And with that, that means that it's basically going to be beginning of the season next year is whenever he's cleared. Yeah, that's why I think they should actually... At the, early, actually, at the, early, at, at yeah, the earliest. Yeah, I think they should honestly keep him out, though, for the entire season. Like, you figure he's going to be a franchise quarterback with how well he has played so far. Yeah. Why oh, yeah. risk something happening if he comes back a little too early? Keep him out the season, put someone in. Once he comes back 100% healthy, that's when you'd want to throw him back in. I'm hoping that this was the scare that the Bengals front office needed to draft some fucking offensive linemen. Because yeah, I think honestly, week, yes. Every single week we have sit here and have said they need to go out. Even before trade deadline, they need to make trades. They need to get they need a line. And need to get a line. And this is what we were worrying about. We said this is literally going to be a Andrew Luck all over again and toward ACL. Now, if this was a he hurt his ankle, twists his ankle. That's one thing, you know, like, whatever. But that, like, That's something that it's not totally on the offensive line. But when your quarterback's getting taken out at the knees, yeah. like, y'all this, need to pick up some shit here and do something. For sure. It, it upsets me because he's been an amazing player. Yeah. Uh, he's a young player, dude. For, he's rookie. rookie still. So, like, he's got his whole NFL career ahead of him, and it could be – scrapped almost because i mean this is a serious injury from yes. mcl acl and other structural damage on the knee like mm-hmm. That's this honestly this what reminds I'm about me more because the mcl and acl you can yeah you can that can be reconstructed. The structural damage is kind of what i'm like okay well how much like what what's the situation down there like what because so i saw the hit and i was like fuck like this... that that wasn't good the lineman got pushed back into like well the lineman actually like pushed the uh, defensive lineman pretty much into the leg, which obviously wasn't intended, but yeah. So Do you see that now, big one like that, it was crazy. What they this reminds me of, though, is remember that Alex Smith uh, play mm-hmm. where he got yeah. his knee fucked up? Mm-hmm. Like, this is this is exactly <clears throat> what it reminds me of, and, like, he just finally got back to able to be able to play. The hit actually looked more like Tom Brady. Like, oh, so I mean, yeah. not, so not this necessarily, one... like line on line or lineman falling back on the leg mm-hmm. but the tom brady one was just like a solid hit i would say this one kind of looked like that the, the one with alex smith was he broke his leg mm-hmm. and the ligaments and everything were all like i guess like wrapped around and everything and that's oh yeah what they were so worried about because of all the starches he needs this one it kind of reminds me of whenever brady was playing in new england and he uh kind of city game Yes, I believe, whatever, however many years ago, and yeah, he dove and basically fell back <laughs> on it and everything. Um, normally, whenever you have your ACL torn, uh, the meniscus most of the time is either partially torn or torn fully mm-hmm. with it. So I don't think they've came out yet and said if it is torn or not, but like the way. I think when they say out. structural damage, they got to be point towards yes. meniscus. Yeah. So, I think this is going to be almost a... He'll be out the rest of the year, of course, no matter what. Yeah. And wins, majority of next year. And I think that if they don't sit him all of next year, I think that he will be missing most of next year. Now, the difference is with this is... <sighs> the society we are in today, like the medical field is growing so much and people are rehabbing mm-hmm. and the 
everyone's getting stronger and faster and all this stuff every single year. Now, can he come back sooner than that? Yes, but like it's just an, on average, <clears throat> people come back to this nine to twelve uh, months. So mm-hmm. on average, I would and also think that he would sit out next year. Also, like you got to think of him and his career. He comes back too early, he could injure it again, and then that's when it becomes a problem. Yep. That's why I said I feel like he should be out next year too. I don't feel like they should risk something just from him being Give like, him I'm good and telling time. the doctors like I'm good, but he still has some like issues going on down mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Like, like I, I said that with Wentz. Entire time. I said that with Wentz when Wentz hurt his uh, when he tore his ACL. Right? Was it his ACL? Yep. yep. I, I said that so. he came back way too early. And then he came back next year, and he tore his other ACL. Yep. So. I, you can like, tear your ACL pretty easily, though. You see that? Uh, I think it was the Atlanta Falcons lineman after he got the sack, jumped up, and went to go flex. Oh, yeah. And he landed on his leg and tore his ACL. I was like, oh, my God, dude. You know, you know how bad that looks on your right? Always stretch, guys, before you try it. <laughs> before you try it, uh. Oh god, I don't even know what yeah, to celebrate. I, saw that and I was like, oh shit, man, like that's not good. No. So I I, I think long story short, there wasn't much else about this game. I mean Tyler Boyd had nine catches, eighty five yards, Antonio Gibson on the Washington football team yep. had sixteen carries, ninety four yards and a touchdown, scary Terry, five catches, eighty four yards. Doing his normal stuff, but So the main who's news the starter? Joe Burrow who's the starter for, for Bengals. Bengals now? Yeah. It is Ryan Finley. Ryan Finley, he went to NC State. He was a rookie last year. Ah, okay. Second, third, second, third round pick last year. He's really, he's he was a good rookie. I mean, not I can't say good rookie. He well, was a good player in high. college. Yeah, uh, but I think they're gonna ride, ride the Ryan Finley train the rest and of the year and mostly just, next year. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's like I think six four, almost six five. I believe so. He, he's a he's a scrawny little kid. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's <laughs> but, tall. But but he is uh, he he was good in college. So we'll see how that goes next week. You guys will probably hear us uh, talking shit about it next week. <laughs> it, uh, well, it might have been a little bit of nervousness too, because you're like, oh yeah, I don't expect to play. Burrow's playing solid, mm-hmm. and then he comes in, and it's like, oh well, no, fuck me. You're, you're <laughs> start, oh shit! Start I gotta play now. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on, we have the Lions versus the Panthers. Which who the Panthers shut out the Lions twenty to nothing. First Lions shutout of the year, look, I believe so. I, I believe, I believe so. yeah, I think so. so. Lions looked absolutely awful. Stafford eighteen for thirty three, hundred seventy one hundred seventy eight yards, and as the team with DeAndre Swift being ruled out last week, um, the team Adrian Peterson and Carry On Johnson, and a couple others, had seventeen rushes for forty yards total. So. That's completely, terrible. Yeah, completely bad offense all around. Um, no Bridgewater, no McCaffrey, no problem. Uh, PJ Walker, who is, if you haven't heard about this kid, um, has basically battled his way all the way to the NFL. So started off, did not receive a scholarship from anywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, no D1, no anything. I think he went to D3 or D2, I believe. Got uh, went undrafted, got picked up by the Colts for about two or three years. Was on their practice squad with Andrew Luck and everything, and then he went to the XFL. And Andrew Luck's father was the not the owner was I think it was one of was one of the owners or something of the XFL. And Andrew Luck was like, "You need to put this kid on your on one of the teams. I don't care what you do. You need to put him on one of the teams." Starts for the Houston Roughnecks, I believe is what they were called. Yeah, and, something like that. And he was, I know there was only like a couple games, but he was the front runner of the MVP race and everything. Comes back and gets signed by the Panthers now, of course, and was back up to Bridgewater. But had a good game um, with his first start in the NFL. 24 for 34, 258 yards and a touchdown. Now, he did have two interceptions, but... Again, like we always say, you get those jitters and everything yep. when it's your first game and everything. So, I Especially still think in the fucking spotlight. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. So, I think with having your, in my opinion, your best player out with McCaffrey being out, yep. your running back who's more of a true scat back. So you're gonna have to throw. I think he had a good game. 
for yeah. what he was gifted, basically. Um, Mike Davis had a good game as well, 64 yards and a touchdown. And P.J. Walker was able to basically spread the ball out to all three receivers. D.J. Moore, seven catches, 127 yards. Uh, Samuel, Curtis Samuel, eight catches, 70 yards and a touchdown. And then Robbie Anderson, seven catches for 46 yards. So not much else to talk about that game. Going but... back to the Stafford thing, though, he mm-hmm. needs to get out of Detroit. I, oh, I, yeah. I think he needs to get out of Detroit. Um, mm-hmm. Fans are not happy. Um, I no. see it all over Twitter. Um, I, I think it's more they feel bad for Stafford mm-hmm. than they're pissed off at Stafford. He's a good player. I, I well, see. You, you look at all the stuff that's around him. Like you're kind of just like fucking him at this point. Yeah, you're just making him like go on that like solid decline. As in, is his he a reliable player? I mean, yeah. I mean, it's not even that. Like, you look at their defense, too. They traded away a couple of their good players, let some go to free agency. Like, they were Darius just like, fuck it, man. <clears throat> we're going to get everybody out of here, I and we're just going to start. How's he been working out, Chase? Uh, we don't talk about it. Okay. So make sure. Defense well, he may be ass. working out fine, but other people might suck. <laughs> yeah. <fine>. I mean, <laughs> Slay's doing phenomenal. Eagles' saying, defense like, is doing garbage. Yeah, like, a player can do good on their own. It's just you have to play good as a team. Um, And... You know, with them doing all that stuff on defense and even on offense, letting people go, it's just you're going to fuck your quarterback over and the rest of the team over by doing it. Thankfully, they still have Kenny Galladay, but he can only do so much. <sighs> so, moving on to the next game, we had the Titans versus the Ravens, which went to overtime. Titans win 30 to 24. Pretty good game. game. Uh, yeah, very good game. So, the Titans. Played good against a really good defense is the, one of the main things uh, here. Mm-hmm. Ryan Tannehill, 22 for 31, uh, 259 yards and two touchdowns. Yep. Eric Kendry, 28 carries, which you would expect from this guy. 133 yards and a touchdown, which was the game-winning touchdown in overtime. That was a hell of a cut, too, on that play. Oh, yes. If you haven't seen the, the touchdown, he basically ran to the left, cut hard, and basically went all the way off to the opposite side of the field and score. When he runs, it looks like he's jogging. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, are you on a treadmill right now, you know, just, like, getting in getting in some time? Like, I don't know what the fuck's going on, because, like, he does not have, like, a long, like, a long, uh, stride. No. His strides are really tiny, but he fucking moves. <laughs> you see those, you see those thighs, those quad muscles? I don't fucking... know why people go high against him. <laughs> it's, it's, it's silly. <laughs> you have to go low against him and just hope that you can put your arms around his leg. Yeah. <laughs> around his <laughs> leg, not leg. Legs, leg. <laughs> like, his leg is bigger than my fucking entire shoulder. <laughs> like, like, Facts. It's ridiculous, but... Corey Davis had five catches, 113 yards. AJ Brown, four for 62 and a touchdown. That uh, touchdown was nasty, though. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, it was. <laughs> Lamar... Lamar Jackson struggles again, 186 passing and 51 rushing and a touchdown. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, 70 yards and a touchdown. And then another thing, interesting thing about this game was Des Bryant had four catches for 28 yards after uh, being picked up by the Ravens a few weeks ago. So it's slowly him working back. him in. You know? Well, for that, it was more just like play action and then just like toss it to him right on the line because the mm-hmm. wide receiver or the corners are playing so far off. He was able to get some yards off of it really quickly. That's, that's true. But I I think this is I don't I'm I'm having a hard time deciding if it is time to start worrying about Lamar Jackson in Baltimore or is this just a normal thing because Mark Ingram's out still I don't know if it's because of Mark Ingram I I no, don't I think it's because of Mark Ingram I do know that they have lost their left tackle for the rest of the year a few mm-hmm. weeks ago. Um, and I believe they lost one other offensive lineman, but it it's been one of the things I've been hearing about a lot lately. Um, is what should happen? I don't think it's like time to bench him or anything like that. No, just can they get something for him if they trade him away? I wouldn't honestly. I wouldn't trade him away in this situation because you no, figure I, like it's it's own like he played solid last year. Mm-hmm. He pl- like he's played okay this year. Like he's had terrible moments. Mm-hmm. But he's played okay. You figure if you help him out, like 
you you guys saw the touchdown pass to Andrews, right? Yep. That yep. was a sm- that was a great throw, like a smart throw on his end. He throws it to the left. He goes out of bounds. Throw it inside a little deeper. Safety's too far towards mid. Can't catch up to that ball. Give your uh, tight end a chance to go for the ball. It was perfectly thrown. So he can throw the ball. I, I, I think it's a little bit of the receivers, but also the old line this year. And I think it's why we're seeing these issues. And people love to complain. Yep. And I think that's, and I think that's why we're at this point right now, basically. Eh, like, you just got to fucking give the dude a chance. I agree. Mm-hmm. They're, I mean, they're, they're going to end up changing the system on him, which is overall going to hurt him in short term, but it might help him yep. long. We'll figure mm-hmm. it out. So, next game we had the Pats versus the Texans. Texans win this game after being the uh, Pats after the Pats beating the Ravens last week. If I could talk today, yeah. um, Cam, the Newton had a, <laughs> Cam Newton had a good game: twenty-six for forty, three hundred sixty-five yards and a touchdown. Better than Brady. I've been needing this. <laughs> yeah, I've been needing and I this Brady. all year. I've been needing this kind of game all year, and then one week I said, "Ah." Eh, I'm going to start Joe Burrow this week. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this oh, is shit. So, I, put, I put him in. Oh, God. I, I put Brady Burrow. in. I, oh, that was dumb. I, I had, had no Burrow. other quarterback. Allen was on a bye. Uh, yep. True. One of my leagues, I had I have Burrow and uh, Josh Allen, and the other one I have Cam Newton and <laughs> Joe Burrow. And I was yeah. like, Washington football team, this is an easy one. Give me Joe Burrow. ACL later. So, uh, <laughs> so Cam had a good game. Demiria Bri- uh, Bride. Sorry. Beard. Beard. Oh. Bride Beard. is actually how they pronounced it. Really? That's weird. Yeah. It's, uh, at least that's what they, that's how they pronounced it. They might, I thought it was like Bird. Bird. That's actually, no, that's how they pronounced it at South Carolina. Now, I'm not uh, They might it. not be able to read. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not saying So, I'm just going off what I've been hearing. It's probably Bird. Um, Bird or Bayard? My other tail. <laughs> and lo- long story short, it's this other. It's this kid from South Carolina. Uh, six catches, 132 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, then you had Deshaun Watson having a great game, just a monster game. Honestly, started but him in my other league. There you go. 380 total yards and three total touchdowns. Um, he did spread the ball out a lot. Uh, Brandon Cooks four catches, 85 yards. Jordan Atkins five catches, 83 yards. And Will Fuller six catches for eighty yards, and none of those t- none of his two passing touchdowns went to either of those. They were to Kiki Kuti and Randall Cobb. Kiki Kuti. <laughs> Kiki Kuti. Uh, I mean, I mean, it it was spread, it was a game. All out. It was yeah, a pretty sta- standard good game. Cam five were looking Watson good going again. against the Pats though. Yeah, me either. Like you better play decent against the Pats. Their defense has been shit recently. Like Watson's solid. Like, or at least he can be. He can be solid. <laughs> Is he solid all the time? No. But uh, I mean, somehow he finds ways to get out of tough situations. And so, yeah. He, he he's able he's he's basically carrying this team. He is this mm-hmm. team. He also. is that team. I mean, besides Brandon Cooks chipping in here and there. Yep. He is this team. It it's it's fully him and some of the receivers. The defense has played horrible this year. I wouldn't be surprised if I, I think JJ Watt will stay there. I think he's gonna be one of those players know. that they just hold on to. Let's come to Buffalo. No, nah, I think I think he's gonna go to the Steelers. <laughs> Because I know that he said he wants to play with his brothers. Both of them can come to Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> but it wouldn't surprise me if there was a trade for yeah. him. I, I think something's going to happen. I don't think JJ is finishing his career in Houston. Moving we'll on to the next game. <laughs> we had the Dolphins versus the Broncos, which kind of was surprising with how Miami played lately and how yeah. Denver's played lately. Uh, to a sat. After the slow start, oh, sorry, the Broncos won twenty to thirteen. Uh, Tua was sat after a slow start. He was eleven for twenty for eighty-three yards and a touchdown. Uh, they pulled him out for Ryan Fitzpatrick, who threw for like one fourteen, I believe. Uh, Devontae like Parker. <laughs> no, I don't either. Devontae Parker, Parker, good game again. Six catches, sixty-one yards, and a touchdown. Uh, and then Broncos bounced back after <laughs> some. 
bad weeks, honestly, offensively. Yeah. But Melvin Gordon, 15 carries, 84 yards, two touchdowns. I believe that uh, Lindsey had about 83 yards, 82 yards, I believe, also on like 16 carries. And then they're, Tim Patrick, they're, five catches, um, 19 yards. Sorry, I started talking oh, both times that you were trying to talk. <laughs> it was like, wait, I'm going to stop. Okay, Sharks don't wait for me. And I was going to talk. <laughs> their running backs in Denver, like their backcourt is amazing with Philip mm-hmm. Lindsay and Melvin Gordon. But like, yes. is it the O line that's really fucking them up? Or like, I don't to, know. To an extent, Melvin Gordon hasn't looked the same for about two years now. I think it's more pass protection than anything. Uh, yes, there is that. I know they did. They did lose one of their, I think it was their starting left tackle or right tackle to COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, he opted out. Uh, and I think they also had another player who got hurt also. So, yeah. The Santa Fe season's your, washed. Two of your starters basically out. You had a Von Miller who get hurt and was out for the year. So, you lose three big time players all to COVID or injury to mm-hmm. start off the season, basically. I mean, you're, yeah. there's not much else you could do. So. I, I think next season Broncos are going to bounce back, especially like I, I can just kind of like feel it. Von Miller will be back next year. So the defense is going to get a big boost again, morale wise. Got your star player For coming sure. back For and sure. um, hopefully some linemen coming back. Hopefully COVID isn't around anymore for next season. Um, and people, uh, everyone plays at that point. Yeah. Um, uh, I will say I, like, I, I completely disagree with a Tua veteran. Yeah, me too. Um, if you're trying to give him the reins, he's going to have slow games. He's going to have bad games. Let yeah. the kid experience it. The thing uh, is, though, to throw in Ryan started? Fitzpatrick is annoying to me. It's kind of like a slap in the face to Tua, too. Like, oh, yeah, you're our starter. Oh, you're having a shit game? Okay, Fitzpatrick, get in there. Like, I, I will say Fitzpatrick did play like decent through a majority of the games. Mm-hmm. Like, Even though they were losing, he played decent. And to throw two in, they start to do good, and then he has a slow start immediately. Like, in, in like what, his third game? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's his third. Uh, but, but like he a has s- a slow start, and then they're like, well, I don't know what, fuck it, we're gonna throw in Fitzpatrick. Fuck you two, we'll go sit on that damn bench. It's like, you realize that you're trying to make this kid your franchise quarterback. You're not giving him all of the opportunities that people need to experience to get fucking better. It's, it's fucking crazy to me. The thing is, why did they consider that a slow start? Like, I mean, 83 yards and a touchdown, that's not bad. I mean, sure, it's not amazing. Well, he's he's still completing. Like, he's over 50%. At least he's not throwing picks. That was the big thing to me. Like, he did not throw a pick. He didn't fumble. So, why are they pulling him? Now, if he would have thrown four picks, it would have made sense to me. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm That's like, okay, a slow you gotta start. Get him out of there, you don't want him to. You don't want him to fucking go ahead and kill his career right now. You want him to have that positive mindset. So that would have made sense to me. But then, like, if you know, like he's playing okay in this game still with 83 yards and a touchdown, like, so why you, get you him guys, out? You guys can do something. Mm-hmm. And that's what I didn't really understand about this was like they set him, mm-hmm. yes, and like you had a bad game or whatever. I understand, you know. Yeah. But then. Right after the game, they come right back out and said, he's our starter next week. So then what was the point, in my opinion, to did, bench him? Did he piss the coach I, off or something? Like I, I understand that you're you're trying to spark the team and get the win and everything. But, like, in my opinion, you just pissed off your player. You just yeah, pissed that, off that your franchise quarterback. Yeah, that killed the mindset for that quarterback, which is fucking terrible. Because I'm sure he's sitting there going, like, I fucked up. Or, like, what the fuck did I do wrong that they're pulling me? Yeah. Uh, shark froze, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> pretty sure he lost connection. Yeah. Yep. Um, oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Would it be a VG no, YouTube um, video without technical difficulties? Yeah, yeah. But, like, to be honest, like, it's just... It's, it's, it's stupid. It's a killer to him mentally. Because, mm-hmm. like, it's, it's just a terrible situation for him. It's a terrible situation for the team. The wide receivers, I'm guessing, weren't really happy about it either. You know, you figure, I'm getting used to this kid the way he throws, and then you switch in for a quarterback who is a fucking gunner. You oh, know, yeah. He'll make any throw possible, that, or, or any throw that he wants. And the team's like, we're okay with that. The thing is that I'm what thinking the fucking here, kid, bro? with Tua coming back next week, 
is his mind going to be, okay, I need to fucking try to get every, like, four passes? Be happy. I wouldn't be happy with the team. I, 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 I don't. Don't think I would he, play, I, I would, I would, I would honestly, I would play out my contract and I'd be like, you know, since you did that to me, fuck this franchise. You don't care about me as your starter. You're, you're going to fucking put me on the fucking sidelines. If I do one thing bad, I, I'm not going to sit here and Jets. deal with that entire situation. I, I don't, he might do okay there. I think he'd be definitely do better than their quarterback now. But. Oh yeah. But like, I'm just worried that he's going to try to force as many completions as he can because he doesn't want to get labeled as having a slow game. Yeah. yeah. And he'll be worried that they're going to bench him again. I mean, well, I know you, I would. You force things, you force things it's going to cause turnovers. Exactly. But I, I guess I don't really get what they want wanted out of him in this game. So for them know, to it's... bench him, it's kind of stupid. I feel like they could have won if they would have kept him in. Oh, yeah, definitely. Let, let his hand get hot and he could try something. Every quarterback I think those receivers has a have trust start. in him more than they do Fitzpatrick at this point. Because you don't know what Fitzpatrick you're getting. Are you getting the 300 yard, four touchdown Fitzpatrick, or the yeah. 180 yard, two <laughs> interceptions and a touchdown Fitzpatrick? Yeah, and that's the difference. But I think that this was a. I think it's a mess uh, it's up. Not immature. I, I I just think that you keep him in there, let him play. Like you need for him to mature. That they yeah. were trying to get the win, and that's why they did it. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. I understand, and I probably would have done the same thing, like trying to get the win. But I just I think at the point you are at with your quarterback, situation. you would have kept him in though, right? I think you have to keep him in. You like, figure they're, they're still in playoff contention. Exactly. Yeah. Change up some plays. Do so, some different so plays. You, Regardless, you guys still lost. Keep mm-hmm. the kid in. If you yeah. would have kept him in, who knows what he would have done. He could have got out. He could have fucking made a deep throw to a receiver that Fitzpatrick didn't notice. Mm-hmm. There's points where you could have just made some some random ass run out of the pocket and just take off for 40, 50 yards. Like, you he's, don't, you he's don't know one what the hell the kid's going to do. He's one of those hybrid quarterbacks. He can he, run he, if he needs to. As, as long, like, this right here, in my opinion, destroys his mindset as their starting quarterback. Yes, I agree with but, you. There, there is also the thing to where it's like, this could help him too, because they're like, well, if you play bad, you're not going to be the quarterback. In so, a way, like, it, yeah. It, depend, it depends on the coaching, like, and how he feels the coaches are acting about that situation. Mm-hmm. But in my opinion, I would not be comfortable if I was too on this situation. Mm-hmm. We'll see next week kind of how he, how he yeah. looks after it. Yeah. And, I mean, that'll kind of determine, like, does he want to stay with Miami, or does he want to explore other options of a team that might actually appreciate him and not pull him in those yeah. situations. Yeah, I agree. So, the next game we had the Steelers versus the Jags. The, uh... Like this was a game? Yeah, I was gonna say, this was, this <laughs> this happened? A high school football team came over. <laughs> yeah, came I guess out, so. And, I mean, did as you would expect. Um, 127-3. Slaughter. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, Big Ben did exactly what you would ru- uh, expect from him. Just, there's no rushing on this team. There hasn't been the whole entire season, and there still isn't. So, Big Ben, 32 uh, passes for 46. 32 for 46 passes, 267 mm-hmm. yards, and two touchdowns. Deontay Johnson had 12 catches for 111 yards. And then Claypool, four for 59 and a touchdown. Now, the reason why they had that many uh, catches and yards and everything was Juju did come out hurt. They haven't fully came out and said the reasoning yet. Uh, so they're. Still I didn't see anything on Twitter yet, so I'm guessing yeah. it's not anything severe mm-hmm. enough well, for them to doing more tests, push so. it out. Agreed. Yeah. So, uh, and the only really other thing is Luton for the Jags, the uh, sixth round pick. Uh, had 151 yards and four interceptions. So, of course, Steelers' defense came out and did what you would expect them to do <clears> and forced turnovers, but Jags well, are you bad. Figure four four interceptions, year. you better you better get more, more points than the other team at that point. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, you noticed that they didn't pull him? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, moving on to the next game, Jets versus the Chargers, 28-34 to 34 was the final score. Uh, Chargers winning. Jets kept it interesting. 
Joe Flacco, 205 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Frank Gore, who started in this game, had 61 rushes or 61 yards and a touchdown. I was like, wow. Mims. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, he, he, they ran him a That's lot. A record. <laughs> For a 90-something year old man, they ran him a lot. 90-something year old man. <laughs> They read him Frank Gore about to be out there with a cane and like get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> yeah. Um, Justin Herbert, uh, in my opinion, has to be the new front runner of Rookie of the Year now. With, Wait, uh, since we got him. Joe mm-hmm. Burrow being out now, but thirty-seven for forty-nine, three hundred sixty-six yards and three touchdowns. All three main receivers had a touchdown in this game. Uh, Keenan Allen sixteen for one forty-five. Then you had uh, Mike. Mike Williams, yeah, yeah, uh, four for seventy-two and a touchdown, and then Hunter Henry four for forty-eight and a touchdown. Now only if it was Hunter Hemsley uh, for a Triple H from WWE, then we would be talking <laughs> about something else that I would like. But Hunter Henry, four oh yeah, catches forty-eight yards and a touchdown. We'll we'll, t- we'll we'll mention something there later yeah. about something that happened. What yes, two days ago? Two days ago. Two yeah. days ago, yeah. Sadly, but it was it was a sad situation, but. Good on him. It's what, you would, it's, it's what you would expect for being there for how long he's been there. Flacco uh, on the Jets looks pretty good. With, yeah. I mean... He has nothing to lose. You, you got nothing to lose, but he's looking good. I'd agree. I'd he's agree. not looking bad. Like he, He's doing all right. He's keeping the Jets in some of these games when the Jets would probably normally get blown out 34 to 7 yes for sure so i mean they need to i i seriously think the jets just need to get rid of darnold at this point see what you can get for him keep flacco for another year go for a quarterback in the draft Trevor lawrence coming in next year oh yeah but are they gonna ruin his career too (laughs) gotta let my dog out you can keep talking so, the very next game, we're going to make someone mad with this one. Oh, yeah, look at that shit show. I'm going to I'm going to try to piss, I'm going to try to piss off both of these people that are listening <laughs> to this game. Uh completely in my opinion, it's true. But anyways, Packers versus the Colts. Uh Colts win in overtime on a game-winning field goal, 34 to 31. Rodgers and really it's Monte Adams can't really do it all for themselves. Rogers, well, to be honest, they could. Rogers could throw like seven touchdowns. Out of three. <laughs> that is true. Trash but ass lost it. Rogers twenty five <laughs> for thirty eight and three for three hundred and eleven yards and three touchdowns. And Devontae Adams seven catches, hundred six yards and a touchdown. I mean, this duo right here is one of the better ones in the NFL. Yeah, right now. I would agree. I agree. Um, the thing 100%. that lost it for the Packers was the three fumbles and the interception. Uh, Good throw, Rogers. <laughs> 10 out of 10, best quarterback in the NFL. Uh, it was good defense, of course. Like yeah. when, you, when you hear that you had three fumbles and an interception, great defense. This is the first thing you, you think, obviously. Uh, or just bad, bad job holding onto the ball. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> and, and honestly, two of the fumbles that I watched personally were just was that in particular, uh, just bad ball carrying. Yeah. Um. So, I, I don't think that. You could sit here and say the Colts are just good. The Colts are good. We beat the Packers. Like the Packers played bad. Relax. Pump the brakes a little bit. Um, Relax. You got your and, one game in against your a good team. And, and then they're gonna come out and say, "Well, we stopped the best rusher in the league. We stopped Derrick Henry last week. Okay, he's had he's he still ran over 100 yards on you." I That's think. not stopping. That's just yeah, it, it, we stopped him from the end him. zone. If, if you would have held him down to 50 yards, I'd be like, "Yeah." Yeah, good. Yeah, you did it. <laughs> good job. Good job. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, Philip Rivers has his once in a month game because honestly, he's always been one of those quarterbacks that has been a roller coaster. Honestly, yeah. so twenty four for thirty six and two hundred eighty eight and three touchdowns. Uh, the Colts still don't know who they want as their running back. Jonathan Taylor comes back out and has twenty two carries and ninety yards after getting, I think, a t- probably a total of twenty rushes in two weeks almost three weeks probably. Yeah. And uh, the only other thing I have really about the Colts is no receiver had over three catches. So he spread the ball out a lot, which is good and everything. Um, so they still don't even know who their leading receiver is either. So, what do they even yeah, got yeah. over there for receivers? It, it was a bad, it was a bad game. Um, holding on to the ball 
and all the turnovers on the Packers is which which is what I lean this towards compared to a the Colts one. had a good game. So, like it, it's more on say yeah, Packers have, have one fumble and an interception. Yes, they if probably you, win it. If you force four turnovers, you should win. It, it exactly. doesn't matter. Like you should win. You shouldn't be going into overtime to kick the field goal to win the game. Like in my opinion, I'm sorry. You forced four four turnovers, score the points that you you got. But like this is also kind of like a a staple game for the Packers as well. Like you get four turnovers, but you're still kind of in the game and you lost by a field goal. Like that's yeah. not something terrible, but like you also need to be like, okay, we don't turn the ball over four times. We easily win this game. I'd agree. For sure. I'm, good job, Rogers. Good job, Rogers. <laughs> Very nice game. I'm going to piss someone off on this one, too. Oh, uh, I know who you're going to piss off. Cowboys versus the Vikings. And, ooh, actually, I wrote it wrong. But the Cowboys won 38-31. Or no, 28. It was 28. That's where I messed up. Oh, that's that's where it was. 31-28. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, why is that score look wrong? Uh, final score was Cowboys 31 to Vikings 28. There, I had, to, I had to change it on my thing, or it's gonna look weird for me. Uh, Cowboys won. Cool, congratulations. You still only have three wins this week, this year. It doesn't fucking matter. You're still not even winning the NFC East. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> like pump the brakes. It's the it's the Minnesota Vikings. Like when have we sat here and be like, oh, you know, you know what the Minnesota Vikings have done this year? They have Jack good shit. Like, Cook. <laughs> like, like, Cooks is the it, only thing that we could say. Wait, wait, wait. Definitely. You mean what has Dalvin Cook done this season? Yeah. Not yeah. that he is that team. Dalvin yeah. Cook is that team. They ain't the Minnesota Vikings. It's the Minnesota I would, Dalvin Cooks. I would, I would say that. Uh, Cook is the main person, but Thielen had an incredible catch. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah he did. Well, CD Lamb also had an amazing. Catch. Yeah, yeah. I actually they both had when, great. I actually catches. talked to Chase like that when you were like, "I'm gonna go get some food or go to the bathroom or something yeah. earlier." <laughs> yeah. So, but both amazing catches. Yeah. The I don't. I understand how you Cowboys fans are. Relax. <laughs> it's the fucking Minnesota Vikings. Five of their five of the defensive backs on this death chart we're out they've been out for three weeks now like now nah, they're thinking super bowl at this point ah right? bro they're going for it they're the not cowboys. virgins anymore the cowboys are winning the <laughs> nfc east i don't know what you all see we got we got Andy dalton back we're going to win the nfc east <laughs> cool in a trash can good job oh and then and then when you know super bowl comes up and we're there Oh my god. Dak will be back. Dak will be back for the Super Bowl, baby. Comes back just for the Super Bowl. I don't care if he's in a boot out there. Put him out there. <laughs> it's it's so stupid. Like pump uh -oh. breaks. Anyways, um offense actually showed up now with Andy Dalton <laughs> being back. Twenty two for thirty two, two hundred to three yards and three touchdowns. Again, Zeke Vikings showed up. <laughs> yeah. Zeke actually showed up for once, hundred three yeah. yards and I didn't write it, but first game for like there. five weeks that he's at over hundred yards. Yep, he and he also had a touchdown as well. And then Mark Cooper, six catches for 81 yards. Um, like we mentioned, C.D. Lamb had an amazing catch. Defender was literally all over him, and he was basically diving backwards. I was going to say, like, he had, like, one of those OBJ-style yeah. catches. Yeah, spinning around, felt was falling backwards and caught it. Ball never even bobbled or anything, and it was just an amazing catch. It was an amazing catch. catch. Um, Viking side, like we mentioned, <laughs> Put up the points as well. Um, it was just there was no defense on either side. Cousins, 314 yards and three touchdowns. He actually did not turn the ball over, which I am surprised about. Uh, Dalvin Cook, 27 rushes for 115 yards and a touchdown. Do not try to tell me that we stopped Dalvin Cook. He still ran a touchdown. He still had 115. He had yards over 100 yards and a touchdown. Y'all didn't do shit. Uh, Adam Thielen, eight catches, 123 yards and two touchdowns, which, like Panda said, had an amazing catch. Yeah. And Justin Jefferson, the rookie, of course, three catches, 86 yards, and a touchdown. Basically, no defense in this game. Chill and y'all won by a field goal. Like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving on to the next game. It was a Sunday night game. Chiefs versus the Raiders. Oh, we're done shitting on the Cowboys now? Okay. Yeah. Basically, they shit on themselves. It's okay. Basically. <laughs> Uh, just like the Cowboys, uh, Vikings game, there was no defense really in this game, but the it's Raiders, normal for the Chiefs. Yeah, 
the Raiders made it interesting again, just like yeah. they did earlier this year, which the Raiders won earlier this year, but Chiefs win this one. But um, Chiefs doing their normal stuff on offense. Mahomes, 34 for 45, 348 yards and two touchdowns. Clyde Edwards, Hilary actually found an end zone twice with 69 yards. Yes, 69 yards. Um, 69. Travis, 69. Yeah. <laughs> Travis Kelsey, eight catches for 127 and a touchdown. And then Tyree Kill, uh, 11 catches, 102 yards and a touchdown. Very good game. Uh, and then the Raiders, like I said, made it interesting. Derek Carr, 23 for 31, 275 yards and three touchdowns. Josh Jacobs didn't get that yards, but 55 yards it did find the end zone for a touchdown. Nelson Aguilar still fine playing in the league after 57 years. I feel right. Like, but... When I saw his name on this sheet, I'm like, he's still in the. Last I knew he was on the San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> no, that was Jordan Matthews. He's a uh, Aguilar has actually been one of their leading receivers this year. Yeah. I believe he's a good if, receiver. If, if 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 you take Darren Waller out, I believe yeah, he is number one. I believe. I have to go back and look. But he, he's a good receiver. Like yeah, he's got he's got moments where he's a good receiver, and then there's points where he just looks he can't like, catch uh, the fucking ball. It, it looks like he's a he looks like he's a lineman. <laughs> I, I feel I feel like you you love him uh, for all his catches, right, Chase? He's a really good catcher. Oh no uh, no drops drop yeah. shark. Oh, that's what that's it was. What it was. Uh, yeah. That's what it was. Oh sorry. Remember what we were talking about earlier? Like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Darren Waller, seven catches, 88 yards, and a touchdown also in this game. Yeah. Um, Raiders did get the ball back with, like, a minute and change. They had a chance. And um, Carr threw an interception. But in the day, I think Carr had a good game, 23 for 31, and 275 yards and three touchdowns. I, I would say he had a good game. Now, I think teams really need to look at what the Raiders have done to the Chiefs. Because this is twice now. They need to figure out what they're doing on defense. Well, this is, some, this is and something that's we how talked you stop it. Because obviously divisional games are going to be harder. They know your schemes, all this other stuff, right? Because you play twice mm-hmm. a year. We talked about this before. Teams need to look at the Raiders because the Raiders were the only team to beat them this year. Mm-hmm. Figure out what they were doing on defense. Honestly, I think Buffalo did a good job like deep play-wise against them. They just had an issue with the run game. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, if, if you look... What they did, they they keep the big plays down normally. They don't like yep. let the huge plays up, and they they are actually used to doing that. At least, most most of the time, <laughs> Grant, there's times they get fucked, but, <laughs> but um, they're used to keeping the big plays underneath. Like they don't let the the long bombs or anything like that. So you figure you you play up against the team as as fucking gun heavy as the Chiefs are, there are going to be plays that slip through. The the score like obviously shows that they slip through a decent amount. It doesn't matter though. I mean, the Raiders uh, Raiders yeah. kept up with them to say the yeah. least. And they had a chance at end at the end. They they should have done something better. Like they could have won this game. They could have given two losses this season. Um, but you know, you figure Carr, not the most reliable quarterback, even though he's played solid. He plays all this game in general, but he's not the most reliable quarterback. He's hit or miss on if he's going to do good or not. Yeah, I would actually take him over the next quarterback we're going to be talking about in the next session here. Yeah, I'm uh, about to go pick up Carr if he's available. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, very next game was the Monday night game. Of course, last night's game. Rams versus the Bucks. Rams did win 27-24. Goes back to, like I said before, Bucks roller coaster defense. Um... They did force two, two interceptions, I believe, or two fumbles. I don't mm-hmm. know. I forgot. Anyways, two turnovers. Um, but Jared Goff, thirty-nine for fifty-one, three hundred seventy-six yards and three touchdowns. Cooper Cup had an amazing first half. Actually, they actually shut him down in the second half. But when you give up eleven catches for one hundred and forty-five yards in the first half, something's fucking wrong. Like I don't know how. Like what memo they did not get? Because Cooper Cup is one of the best, one of the better receivers in the league. How do you not yeah. find Honestly, his route running kind of looks like his, <laughs> his out running looks like Cole Beasley's a bit. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yep. But like, in my opinion, like, how do you not find a white boy? No. <laughs> like, how do you not find him? Like, he's uh, he's in the slot ninety percent of the time. <laughs> like, it's not hard to pick him out. Like, 
Well, like I said, like I mean, <laughs> he he is really like he's like Cole Beasley. Like he, he, he's got he's, he's got the great Cole like Beasley. cuts. Like he he knows how to get the defender on like a a quick out and go in. You know, it's like he's really good with the fakes. Cole Beasley does that. I'm pretty sure that he's actually watched Cole Beasley because they're <laughs> relatively the same fucking person. I would agree. So it's like you you have to look at people who play the position, who know how to do route running, figure out how they place their body in every situation. And Cole Beasley is literally one of the best wide receivers when it comes to breaking up uh, breaking up zones. He's mm-hmm. one of the better possession receivers in yeah. the league, in my opinion. So if if you look at him and then you look at fucking uh, excuse me uh, Cup, it's like mm-hmm. they're the same fucking person. Yep. Mm-hmm. Cup is a little bit younger, probably a little bit yeah. faster. That's why I say he's the next generation. Yeah, I mean, uh, normally you're younger, like... you're a little faster anyway. So. Yeah. Nah, know. never, dude. Plus, I, you see... Beasley has that fucking mane. <laughs> <laughs> dude, he's got five pounds of hair on him. Don't worry, it's, it's weighing him down. Uh, got a little ass head. Fucking hair weighs more than his body. Dude, he's got weighted hair, you know. that. That's how he trains his legs. He's like Rock <laughs> Lee when he takes off his weights. Jesus. Robert Woods also had 12 catches for 130 yards and a touchdown. Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> and then on the Buck side, Brady and most of the offense did struggle. Brady, 26 for 48, two touchdowns. Had also had two interceptions thrown. Ronald Jones, 24 yards rushing total. Fournette, 17 yards rushing and a touchdown. I thought Fournette would do better in Tampa Bay. I did too. Um, not in this game particular, just because of how good the Rams <sighs> rushing defense is and hey, he got aaron team. donald in the front um, line shit good luck but i kind of expected more from Fournette, especially later on as the year goes by learning the playbook now beginning of the year i kind of knew that this would happen you know uh yeah but yeah but antonio brown did lead the league or lead the league goodness <laughs> the team in receptions and receiving yards antonio brown had eight catches for 57 yards Chris Godwin, 7 for 53 in a touchdown. And then Mike Evans, 5 for 49 in a touchdown. And um, then this is the second game in five games that Gronkowski did not find the end zone. So he's found um, the end zone three of five games, but yeah. did not find it in this game. So the interceptions from Brady were terrible throws. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And like you could tell he saw the receiver. It wasn't like he was just like, I know the route, I'm going to throw it there. Yes. He saw the receivers, and he just overthrew them, or underthrew. <laughs> like the, I mean, there was I think it was like towards the end of the second half, or towards like the end of the third quarter when he threw the interception. It was over the receiver by about seven yards, and went right to the safety. The safety barely moved. Yep. <sighs> it was terrible. That's it's Brady like it, for you. Well, the thing, it's Brady this year. Like, he's played solid other years. Or he doesn't overthrow like that. And I don't know if it's because of the receivers, if he's, like, not confident in them, and it, or he's, like, over, like, overestimating their abilities. Because you figure, oh, yeah, you know, like, I got someone like Godwin who can run underneath that ball and catch that shit if I throw it up. Mm-hmm. And he's like, Mike Evans could probably do that. No, he can't. <laughs> not, not at that speed. Nah. Like Evans Mike Evans, a, Mike he's fast. He's a he's vertical not like, guy. He's not that fast. You got to you got to hit him with those high balls to try to. That that's like that's like comparing uh who the fuck is it um. We'll we'll just say, uh Waller, to mm-hmm. Marquise Goodwin. Exactly. <laughs> it's not gonna fucking happen. Marquise Goodwin is fucking speedy as shit. Yep. He's he ran track. <laughs> Like he, he can he did outrun everything. him every single time. Yeah. Not saying Darren Waller's slow. Or no, anything, no, I'm, I'm just comparing the two to like comparing like Godwin. You got Godwin versus or Goodwin versus uh, Waller. Like it's you can easily tell which one's going to be faster. Yeah, it's just yeah. two separate two separate, two separate uh, builds. Play styles. Two separate builds, two separate play styles. Like so, like if if you're expecting one player to play that way, you can't expect them all to play that way. Mm-hmm. And I feel like Brady's kind of overestimating everyone because he's like, we got one speedy guy here. This guy's somewhat fast. We got Antonio Brown who he's can run somewhat deep. fast. Like it's like, yeah, you got those guys, but you can't compare all of their speeds to Godwin's. Nope. And it's 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 a dumb situation because Brady just overthrows the ball, underthrows the ball sometimes completely misses the entire fucking play. 
I, I, it's it's weird to see from Brady after having him in my division for fucking so many years. <laughs> so it's like I'm like, where was this when you played in in New England, man? Like, fuck you. Mhm. Well, I mean, I guess keeping on the little topic of sports, some people consider the sports. The Undertaker retired from Officially. the WWE. Yep. Officially. Officially. I remember growing up watching him. I mean, dude's been around for years, so to no. see him go on a good send off, I'm happy for him. I'm sure he's still going to be involved in WWE in some way. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's going to work in like the recruiting department. Mm hmm. Or like somewhere in the back office, you know, maybe get him on the announcer I, I table. If, if he's if he's not doing recruitment, I'm pretty sure he's just going to fix up his motorcycle and ride it around. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I think that somewhat wraps up the uh, sports section that we got going on today. Moving on to our next section. Uh, kind of got some upcoming events and what's happening in the gaming world. Call of Duty Cold War released uh, last week. Yeah. So far, it's been a hit, especially among us. Us three have been playing it a bunch. Shark especially loves the zombies. Uh, Panda and I have been dabbling in multiplayer and zombies a I, lot. More zombies for me, but multiplayer occasionally. I, I've been on the diamond grind and multiplayer, so make sure you guys on tune in. On the dark in. matter grind. Make sure you guys tune in on the <laughs> Twitch streams. We'll be grinding diamond camo on ARs. But uh, something to go along with Cold War is if you guys have Cold War... Make sure you check out my shot call page. Um, I'll have a link down in it in the description below. We have a tournament going on for those zombies players. It'll be a uh, six teams of four. Whoever gets the highest round wins. It's all just for bragging rights and fun. So if you guys are down for that, I'll have a link down in the description below. Make sure you guys go check that out. Um, yeah, Cold War is just... It, it feels like... I don't know. It feels like a revival of the love of Call of Duty that I had. I didn't like Modern Warfare, but it's something about Cold War that is really like, I'm enjoying this game. Mm -hmm. I don't know um, what it is, but it's to, something. Uh, to pause right here, uh, they, this is going back to the NFL thing here. Oh, okay. Uh, they just uh, did a double header for the NFL Network, like they just announced it. Uh, the Bills and Broncos will be at 430, Panthers and Packers will be set for 815. Um, yep. It'll be on the NFL Network. Uh, it was just announced. I literally think like ten minutes ago. Did you get it on your phone? I just got the yeah. I just got the notification on my phone. So there you go. Hmm. There's just some games to watch. Heck yeah! But uh, uh shifting back over. Thank yep. you, Panda, for that breaking news. <laughs> Seriously though, I mean it was. But uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I love zombies. I love multiplayer campaign. I'm dabbling a little bit. Not done with it yet. Um, but tell me what you guys think of Cold War so far down in the comments. Um, and honestly, like, if you favorite guys think I'm getting it. Yeah, or favorite guns for sure. Favorite guns, favorite class. Whether it be multiplayer or zombies. Um, and stuff like that, for real. Um, Zombie shotties pretty much run that entire thing. That no, the, only uh, the Howard runs it. <laughs> no, you could you could legit pack, punch, uh, what the hell is the other one? Gallows. Uh, Gallows, yeah. You can pack a punch that three, and you can make it probably around round forty, and it'll be it'll be perfectly okay. fine. I okay. Prefer, I prefer Shark that. prefers the one oh, shot kill, but hey. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, that makes sense. I mean, if you if you actually aim for the head with that, it's it can take out three or four zombies at a time anyway. Yeah. So. Like to say good luck to Panda on his uh, endeavors of getting the uh, <laughs> <laughs> grenade launcher golden. Oh, this is gonna be amazing. <laughs> But yeah, I After mean, I do it though. I've got two more to go with the rocket launchers. That that's kind of what we've been doing recently in the world of Twitch and stuff. Right now, it's just kind of been a lot of grinding and Cold War. I've been grinding diamond camos and gold camos. Almost got the AK gold. It's really been a bitch recently, but uh, we've been doing zombies, and we want to include you guys in as much stuff as we can. So I made a tournament on Shot Call. Again, link in the description. If you guys want to join that, totally free, no cost. I know everyone loves the word free, so make sure you guys do go check it out. I'll be live streaming it December 2nd, right? Is that the day I said it? Also, I if you don't, uh, I believe yes. so. If you don't have a team, um, and you start to make a team by yourself, uh, join up with another team. That way we can get at least full squads in. Yep, um, and then Discord link will be in the description. So if you guys do want, make sure you guys join the Discord, because people will be posting their team links in there as well. Yeah. And stuff like that, so... But uh, just tr try to make sure that there's squads of four in each game. That way one team doesn't have to get split up from another. 
Mm-hmm. Not much really happening in gaming world, though. I mean, Cyberpunk coming out here soon. Um, yep, uh, on the 10th of December. Uh, we also have the World of Warcraft. Shadowlands. Uh, Shadowlands. That's what it was. That, I was like drawing dropped, a blank. <laughs> that dropped last night, actually, around, I think, 6 p.m. It took um, Tim the Tapman about an hour to get into a server. Because yeah. Because... He was trying to get well, into the most popular server. Yeah, the, the thing is, a majority of them are on, like, very populated servers. Uh, yeah. It does not work out well for them. My server, I logged on last night, just got, got over to Shadowlands, and then Panda I hopped got off because I wasn't going to place. Tim yeah, I, I actually got in before Tim and Courage did. <laughs> uh, I, I had their streams up, I hopped on, I was like, oh, yeah, like, this is where my, my uh, well, at the time it was 120 was, now it's down to 50 because they, they changed the leveling. Mm -hmm. Um. Cut it in half, the, basically. The max, yeah, the max level is 60. But I'm like, I'm not going to play by myself. I'll wait for Chase to get on. We can grind out off stream. Um, and we can talk about that once. Unless you guys do want to see some wild streams. And if you do, make sure you comment down below. Let me know. It's, uh, it's, it's very enjoyable for me. It's just, it's not something that we have to stress about. No, it'd be it's one like of those COD chill or, days. Yeah, it's like COD or Overwatch or something like that. It's more competitive for this. It's kind of just like controller. relaxed. Yeah, it's just, it's a relaxed session. It's it's just chill. We don't have to worry about fucking the other person getting mad at us for dying. Unless we do like raids, that. then it's a whole different situation. That, that's more just the randoms that get mad <laughs> for people dying. I normally just, like, laugh a little bit and go, <laughs> so, scrub. A little backstory on why I say raids is, um, I think I was a healer, right? And yeah, uh, some guy got person. mad and wanted to kick me out in the first raid I ever did. Yeah, because I was wasn't healing playing... Probably. You were no, an undead no. priest, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no, 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 no. I remember. It was me taking aggro. That's yeah. what it was. I was my yeah. death knight. And people were getting mad because I no, wasn't no, taking no. aggro. No, it, this was your priest when we were doing the Undercity thing where it, the Undercity was destroyed. Oh, was um, that it? And they yeah, were mad because I wasn't they healing? Were, they were upset at Chase because he wasn't healing properly. <laughs> So I was trying my best. It was literally his first raid ever. So he's like, "Okay, so this is what I do." And we're like, we were talking it over, trying to get him done. By the end, they were like, "Yeah, it was okay. Like, good job." Um, he just had to try to figure out how to switch through each player, mm -hmm. um, to give heals. And I'm like, "Well, if you click that little left thing over there where it shows the raid, you can click on their name specific and just hit the button to heal." Yeah, and then I was like, <laughs> "I did it. <laughs> we completed so he, it." He did good. Uh. I would actually like enjoy just playing that, like just grinding it out for a couple hours. But Shark's like, fine. I didn't want to play WoW anyways, nerds. <laughs> I I really enjoy I it. Like I said, it's not. Football. Yeah, it's, not <laughs> it's not competitive uh, to me. So you're like... playing your decade old game. I'll play my decade old game. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, at least ours gets updates. <laughs> oh, I can update yeah. my roster anytime. I don't care. <laughs> Um, oh, but it is a very enjoyable game. Uh, there. Just lost um, to Trevor Lawrence. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck him and Travis Anthony. Fucking made me look like their bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I believe that uh, Shark had made a comment about something uh, other than WoW because we were talking about that before. I don't uh, even know. I don't remember what he said specifically because we were talking about games and you said you could talk about this, 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 and this. Uh, I know you said uh, zombies, like the tournament. Uh, you said, or I said, wow, and you said yes, that. And then oh, you said I something said you else. Could talk about um, Valhalla. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Valhalla. Everyone's That's loving it. it. I don't have it, but from what I've seen, everyone is really loving it. And people say that if you like Viking shows, like Viking on Hulu, by the way, pretty good show so far. Watch a little bit of um, it. Um. You'll definitely enjoy it. I mean, story mode's very engaging. I know a couple of my mods, Bill, Hyper Bill, he likes it so far. Jets, I think Jets has it, doesn't he? he or does. No. He does. Okay, he yeah, does. Jets is saying that he's liking it a lot. So, if you guys like those old-fashioned zombie games, I mean, <laughs> old-fashioned like Viking games, you guys yeah. would probably definitely enjoy Valhalla. I mean, very story-based driven. I was always an Assassin's Creed lover, but I don't know if I'd like I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this one because I haven't played it yet. So, I don't know. Views are pretty positive on it, so that's a plus. Yeah. That yeah, kind of sure. basically wraps up everything. <laughs> um. Well, we could do one more thing here. Uh, they also did announce um some people uh going to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, which is Peyton Manning, Calvin Johnson, mm. and uh Charles Woodson. Uh, Three. and also Jared Allen. 
three four, hu four huge names. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they did announce them to go in the uh, Hall of Fame ballot this year, so uh, they're the I think four first year eligible players. I think Penn and I talked about this earlier. Um, yeah, Charles Woodson and Peyton Manning are more than likely going to be going. Calvin's I, a. I expect Calvin will make it there. Like if he doesn't. Make if he doesn't do it this year, year he's definitely making it, it next year. year. Calvin will be in the Hall of Fame. Yes, one hundred percent. Especially even after not even playing a full career, honestly, because he left early. Uh, he left because he had so many fucking head injuries. Well, that's also because uh, well, the Lions. Going on. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but the thing is, like, if, if you look at, like, where he was, that's wise he was, he was going to break record. Mm -hmm. He was going to, like, he was a, just a freak, honestly. Um, but I'm interested in seeing who all, um, gets in. Yeah, I mean, this is starting to get into some prime players. Uh, uh, also, there's actually one more thing that I would like to talk about. Uh, and that is the uh, Marvel's uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales. Yeah. Um, heard it's a good game. Uh, I've heard it, but I also dislike that it's not necessarily a. Cause by by what was said, it's not necessarily completed. Yeah. It's essentially, you're playing an uncompleted game. Now, <clears throat> I'm not sure why they would do that. Like, if they have additional content coming up for the game, like DLC or stuff like that. I suppose that could make sense, um, but overall, like if I don't think they charged full price for it, I think it was like forty nope, or something. It was. Like that. Uh, I thought it was sixty. I thought it was full price because I remember Jets was talking about. It. I know on PlayStation oh, Four, it's full I think price. he said it was sixty-five. Yeah, sixty-five. Um, that's out where he lives. So that's Canada. His price so... is, yeah, his price is different than ours. Yeah, theirs is more than ours. Yeah. So I'm guessing ours is probably like fifty-five. 50. It might be 50. 50. Which, for the amount of content it gives, I don't know if I would say it should be priced that high. Well, I don't know if that's because they have uh, DLC or additional content incoming. Mm -hmm. it's like, they, they, I mean, 50, as long as you're enjoying the game, if you at least get... Like, get a what, good two say, hours, three hours, four hours out of it, I'd say it's worth it. I would price. say five would be fine. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, you're gonna, obviously going to free roam anyway. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure there's plenty of secrets. And just be like, all right, let's just go ahead and swing over to this mission. It's like, oh, no, oh, you want to oh. check out the city. You want, like, you want to, you want to go around and check shit out. Especially now, those PS5 users and the, all uh, that the shit. The glitches that happened uh, in the one video that we, we saw was actually pretty funny. So Dude turned from like a what was it like a uh, ice patch? Yeah, an ice patch to a snow patch, then to a house, and then like a. <laughs> A oh, fucking yeah. row of yeah. clothes on yeah. hangers, all while trying to stop a carjacker. So he's on top of this car as a fucking snow patch, and it's like this is probably the funniest thing in the world right now. So, I I think that it's a good game. Um, also just got some word that um, for those gamer gamer peeps, uh, Xbox Series X and S will be on will be uh, available at GameStop later today. So if you guys are looking to bump those out, I know probably by the time this is uploaded, um, they might not be available, but still, at the time, talking to Shark and Panda, if they're looking at that, um, they'll be available later today. And yeah, good luck to all those that are trying to get the next-gen console. Especially, I know Christmas is coming up and stuff like that, so good luck to you guys. <laughs> I actually would like to get a uh, a switch still. Oh, right now they're on sale. Black Friday deal on Amazon, two hundred three hundred yeah. bucks. Yeah, that's. Uh, I feel like I've, I've I've told you that, Panda. Yeah, yeah, uh, you did. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I also saw a few other deals too, which I actually really liked. Um, I'll just have to uh, mail some paddles to Shark there, and have his buddy uh, color those for me. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm well, I think that about wraps it up. So, thank you guys so much for tuning into whatever episode I can't remember right now, but it'll be <laughs> it'll be uploaded at the right episode. I think it's seven. Um, I appreciate you guys hanging out. Appreciate Shark and Panda for coming in here yep. every week. Um, and if you guys did, if you guys liked the video, make sure you guys give it a like, comment, tell me what your favorite part was. Also, comment some answers to our questions that we asked during the podcast. 
And if you guys really like to make sure you guys hit that subscribe button along with that bell so you guys know about all the uploads that we do here at Vengeance Gaming and the Vanguard Nightly News crew. My name is Vengeance, that's Shark, that's Panda, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Yeet.